e ma le ni be yen o dile loko e siku dede asiko yi hello everyone it's adironke again i hope your day is going well today i'd like to discuss the answer to this quiz that i asked on instagram what two letters of the yoruba alphabet are consonants but often appear as vowels when they make up syllables this was what i asked and i knew that people were going to get it so i put a 10 dollar price reward thing <laughs> um what two yoruba letters are consonants but often appear as vowels when they make up syllables sure enough um somebody got it almost immediately Egbontosi, who also happens to be my patron <laughs> who i also owe ten dollars thank you so much for your support so the answer is me and ni those are the two consonants that can also be vowels when they have to be when they make up a syllable when they are the only letters in a syllable so yeah that's the that's the question that's the answer but i'd like to explain i'd like to explain better these are the yoruba letters this is the yoruba alphabet alphabet yoruba and i'm going to recite them i have a video dedicated to them and i explained them in detail and their opportunities for verbal practice in that video i will link it somewhere around here but i'm going to recite them and stress on these and how they become vowels a b d a e f g b e e g k l m m m n n n o o p r c c t u w y these are the letters these are the these are the points of concentration ni ati mi you can call them two spirit letters they are consonants when you're thinking about your about consonants you mention them typically you don't mention them when you're thinking about vowels because it's not what they are by default it is in a specific case that they become vowels so they are two spirit they look like consonants they were birthed as consonants but they are also vowels uh, tone marks typically go on vowels and so tone marks go on ni and mi as well if that tone applies for that syllable if only ni me makes up a syllable and since syllables typically contain a vowel what may what is a syllable the short unit of pronunciation most short units of pronunciation contain a vowel units of pr pronunciation typically have to contain a vowel so when it's just ni and me they become vowels and because they are vowels and we can put tone marks on vowels you can put tone marks on ni and me as well somebody asked me a question um i'll see if i can insert a screenshot of that somewhere here and they it was my video on tone marks and i one of my examples my my older video on tone marks and one of my examples was alanga which is lizard ala ba there are four syllables in that word ala ba so because i put 
the tone mark remi do mi alangba remi do because i put do on ni <laughs> they were like that is not correct in that case it is serving as a vowel it's the only letter in that syllable so it automatically becomes a vowel as well as a consonant <laughs> in and of itself uh, so yes it is okay to put tone marks on ni and ni in those instances in the instance where they become vowels so um i suppose that's the answer to that i i don't know if i responded and promised to make a video on it or so but this is the answer to that so when ni is serving as a consonant it is ni when ni is serving as a consonant it is ni when ni is serving as a vowel it becomes n. when ni is serving as a vowel and it's the only letter in that syllable so it becomes a vowel it becomes n. 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 instead of pronouncing it as the letter ni that it is in that case it becomes n. that is the other <laughs> that is the other side to it so if you would want to liken it as a gender ni can be ni but it can also be a mm. 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 for me as well me is me when it's a consonant but when it's the only letter in a syllable and it becomes a vowel as well as a consonant then it becomes mm. 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 So, ni, mm. me, mm. I'll give you example sentences. For example, fuakbere. For example, in the statements, mumbo, mumbo, and anshere, anshere. Let's start with mumbo. Mo. I. Mm. Is am. Sometimes it is is. Sometimes it is are. This is a word. This is a letter. This is a syllable. This is a consonant as well as a vowel. <laughs> mm. Mm. Is how you say it. So. Instead of saying ni, what you would say if it was a consonant, you say n, n, because it has now become a vowel as well as a consonant. It, it is now a consonant in appearance, but a vowel in pronunciation. So you don't say ni, you don't say mo, ni, bo. You say mo, n, bo, mo, n, bo. Depending on the tone, here it aligns with the mi. Mm. The reason it doesn't quite sound like me mm, in mo, because if it did, it would be do me do. So it would be mo mm, bo. But it doesn't sound like that because of the do me compatibility theory that I explained in the past. I mentioned that when me comes right after do, it sounds like me. So it's mong. I've explained this. I've given you the tips for proper pronunciation. What the one hour something minutes of it all it has been fully covered. So do me mong bo. Anyway, mm here. You can see that there's a tone mark on it. Typically, I and I thought this in the past that you put tone marks on vowels but you also put it on uh ni and me because they may not look like vowels but when it's just them in a syllable you realize that they are also vowels as well as consonants mung bo mung bo i am coming i am coming so um anshere is another one that's the second one and Sherry, we are 
plain. I told you that sometimes mm is arm, um, sometimes it is is, sometimes it is are. Uh, in statements like this, especially when it's standing alone. When it is standing alone has a word in a statement. Mm is both mm anyway indicates that the statement is in present tense or present continuous tense. Ang shere ang shere a is we mm do me see it's not do me a mm shere it's ang shere because of the do me compatibility theory. I will link that as well. So this is me you pronounce it like me ang shere but you can see here that it is standing alone as a syllable as well as as a word and so it's okay to put a tone mark on it because it is it has now assumed its vowel identity it looks like a consonant but it is also a vowel when it has to be ang shere Ang shere, we are playing. We are playing. We are playing. So you can see now that um, it's a consonant, but it has become a vowel because it's the only letter in this syllable. This syllable also happens to be a word. Mm is a word. It's a letter. It's a syllable. It's a consonant, it's a vowel, it's a word. Ang, shere. For me, I'll give you examples for me as well. I have two examples here. Mbatilaya. <laughs> I took this from the song. Mbatilaya keregbe ni ojaoa. If you know, this may bring back memories for some people. Um, and also, Mbamatira. 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 So, Mba is a contraction. Mba is a contraction of Mioba. Mba is a contraction of Miuba. So it typically in the Yoruba language, we like to combine words. We like to shrink words, you know, and it's not exclusive to the Yoruba language. Even in the English language, instead of saying is not, sometimes you say isn't. Instead of saying I will, you say I'll, I'll go. I'll, you know. So it's not exclusive to the Yoruba language. I'm sure it's in other languages as well. Mba is mi oba. Mi oba, mi oba, and that would be I would have, or I should have, or I ought to have. So sometimes it is I would, or I would have. I just wanted to stress that sometimes it is I would. It's always depending on the context and the statement. I would have. Sometimes it is I should, or I should have. Sometimes it is I ought to, or I ought to have. But mi oba, you may notice that the O here is seen in other statements and O typically negates O typically negates a sentence so if you say me O lo you're saying I am not living or I won't be living sometimes one of the two I'm not living or I won't be living me O lo if you say me O jeum it is, I'm not eating or I won't be eating. I'm not eating or I won't be eating. Me jail. But in this context, whenever ba comes after o, a conditional statement is created. A conditional is created when ba comes after o. So instead of o being not, it creates a conditional when it, when ba comes after it ba is like may or like if it just relates to words like that i don't know if there's one single english word that can explain what ba is but ba just know that the synonyms for it are if maybe 
you know and words like that is it just creates a conditional scenario so mba instead of being i not if or something if oh is taking a negating stance because ba comes after it, it creates a conditional so it would be i would the conditional sometimes it, 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 it would be i should sometimes it would be i ought to but it just creates a conditional like that and these are possible translations that you can give this in the english language miuba miuba so mba silaya is um it's this one and i did say that sometimes it would be i would sometimes it would be i should sometimes it would be i ought to depending on the context i would is what mba somewhat relates to here in this context i would mba i would t is have t is have laya is the contraction of the words ni aya ni is have or had Aya is wife. So I would have had a wife is what this is. But my emphasis is here. There are two syllables in mba. There are two syllables in mba. M being one. Ba is the second. So m relates to do. You can see that because it's the only letter in this syllable, it, it has become a vowel in pronunciation. It's a consonant in appearance. It looks like me, but because it is the only letter in this syllable and it has now become a vowel, you say mm, but you say it according to the tone that applies. So mm, it's what applies. And so you say mm, do, mm, do, mm, do, mm, ba, do, me. This is me but instead of saying do me do me is instead of saying mm, ba, mm, it's m ba because of the do me compatibility theory i feel like i'm going to be stressing it a hundred more times <laughs> throughout the course of teaching, teaching this language to see the first five videos that i've made on pronunciation or at least know what is in there even if you don't watch the whole thing because most of the lessons that I'm going to be giving after now would relate to it in one shape or form. So I encourage you to see it. So this becomes me, me, mba, mba, do me. Instead of me, it becomes me. When do comes after me, it, instead of do, it becomes do. I've explained it. I don't want to over teach because then it gets annoying mba mba two syllables do me mba you can see that there's a tone mark on this letter it looks like a consonant here it's it just looks as like a consonant now because it's the it's the only letter in that syllable it has become a vowel so mba tilaya in the song that i took it from Ajayi Dora, Ajayi Sisi, Mumbati Laya, Kerekbedi Ojeo. It's like I would have had a wife, but I, uh, I drink, I drink palm wine too much. Probably I spent all my money on buying palm wine, that I don't have any money to take care of a wife. That's the it's a, uh, just the funny folk song. So Mbati Laya, I would have had a wife. The other example is. Mbamatira. Mbamatira. Sometimes you create conditionals in cases like this, like, oh, I shouldn't have, or I, you know. Sometimes, to why would you have conditionals? Sometimes it's to express regret, or sometimes it is to stress what should have been, what you would have preferred to happen instead. You'd find mba in statements like that, like, oh, that shouldn't have happened, or I should have done this, or I ought to have, or I would have, type statements. Mba matira, mba, I should, mba, sometimes it is I should, sometimes it is I ought to, sometimes it is I would, here it is I should, 
ma is like not if i say ma jeun sometimes it is do not sometimes it's just not do not eat that is ma jeun ma is not here t is have t is like have that is the english word that fits it here ra ra is by a is can be im sh, her or it here it is it i don't know what video i have explained it as well the how to create a third person pronoun in the object form i've explained it i will make a separate video on it but you duplicate this letter separated with a hyphen and then you use the do mi re mi mi re um for, <laughs> is it cheat code what's the what is proper for it guide <laughs> use that guide to figure out what it will be the it or him or her would be after the verb using the last vowel in the verb i'll explain it don't worry but just know that ra here is could be by it depending on the context if i just say ra i'm saying by it you know ra here is bought it because it would be incorrect to say i should not have buy it so i should not have bought it Mba matira should not have bought it. Mba. So, mm. Ba. Same explanation. I also want to give an explanation, uh, give a scenario in which um, have. Because in the previous statements, like this one, here it is I would, not I would have. Here it is it served as I would. I would here it served as I should but I want to give one in which I would have is visible and it is mbawa 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 here it is I would have in the previous examples that I gave for mba it was basically just I would but here it is I would have so mba I would have wa Wa is to look or look for. It's to look for. Could be look in the context, but it relates to looking for something. So look for. And then a is it. So do me. If the last uh, vowel in the verb, in the preceding, in the verb is uh, me. You duplicate it you replace you duplicate that vowel and you leave you leave it as re mi re do mi re mi mi re i'll explain it i was uh, that that would be too much for this for this example i'll explain but just know that this is looked for it i would have looked for it i would have looked for it mbawa 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 i would have looked for it Mba, wa, mba, wa, I would have. Instead of just I would, like it was in the previous statement, it's actually I would have. I would have looked for it. Mba, wa. So that's that for why sometimes ni and me appear as vowels. They look like consonants, but they become vowels. When they are the only letters in a syllable, they become vowels. And then it is okay to put tone marks on them. In the past, I was an advocate for, if you like, don't put uh, tone marks on them. If you like, put tone marks on them. But I feel like you have to, or you should, it's advisable to, because if there's no tone mark on this, I will just read it as, Remi mba, which doesn't really make general sense. Mba, the thing the door on it guides me immediately. Like if I'm reading a Yoruba book or something, a piece of literature, it would be nice to see the tone mark on 
the two spirit letter here two spirit because it looks like a like a consonant at first glance it, it's intended to be a consonant in its creation par what it has always existed as but it can't be a vowel when it's alone when it's alone when it is alone and it is the only letter in a syllable and it can be itself then you realize that it is also a vowel if you have any questions please don't hesitate to ask thank you for your support thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video enjoy the rest of your day and bye for now